Well, hello, everyone, and welcome into the Go 24-7 podcast. My name is Bryce Kuhn, alongside my partner, Glenn West. Glenn, uh, we were just kind of talking about this beforehand. Fall camp has been a blast. Uh, shout out Brian Kelly, giving us a lot of media availability. We got to see a lot of different stuff, 11 on 11, everything in between. But it's going to be kind of nice to be able to, uh, you know, just check it out on game days, head to the Kelly Presser on Mondays, players later in the week, and and avoid that just blistering heat. That I don't know about you, man. I've I've gotten quite the the arm the farmers tan from uh, this this fall. Oh, I definitely do. You don't want to look at the my feet to ankle ratio there in terms of tan. My yeah, mid arm to shoulder is definitely a, a a different shade of of white of pale white so and you can probably see if you're really looking closely that i still probably have some sunscreen on my face and so my face looks a little bit paler today than maybe it will it, it does in, in in other uh versions of this podcast but no great uh we it's great that we were allowed this kind of access this year i mean i think it's uh it's, it's a sign that LSU and Brian Kelly feels pretty comfortable about this team in terms of just uh, uh, kind of where they are from an accountability, from an effort standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, and really all those uh, elements receive high marks for me. I mean, it, it really didn't look like there were any practices there where, you know, guys got out of hand, you know, mentally and there were fights breaking out. There was none of that this uh, this fall. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that, you know, it was a, it was a very informative practice sessions for, for all of us that were out there and very appreciative that Brian Kelly opened it up for us this year, uh, a little bit more and give us a little bit more to talk about throughout the entire entirety of the three week session. Yeah. And, and you kind of mentioned there, no fights. There was the one day where Jacoby and Giller got fired up, but yeah. I don't have to remind people what last year was like, uh, in terms of the, <laughs> The, the scuffle, uh, we'll call it yeah. that loosely, that made uh, right in front of us, too. Right in front of us, too. Yeah, <laughs> There's a was... reason, Glenn, that they moved that team period on the 120 yards away from us on the opposite yes. side. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's good, man. Fall camp, uh, our media availability, we believe, has come to a close. LSU will have what we also I'll say we believe this podcast, you're going to be listening to it, and maybe things change, but. Um, it will be a closed scrimmage, it sounds like, and kind of a walkthrough of sorts that the team's going to go through on Saturday. Um, and that's going to be what we believe to be in front of L Club members. And, Glenn, I saw kind of the press release, too. It sounds like it's really going to be an opportunity for you know this 2024 version team to really mingle with the LSU alum uh, and, and really kind of go back into – uh, the football alumni, it looks like there's going to be an alumni luncheon and everything. So that thing's supposed to start around 10 a.m., end around 12 on uh, Saturday. But, Glenn, let's kind of start here because we really haven't talked about this since. And I think you mentioned this today out at camp. Last Saturday kind of felt like here's the media's last big hurrah. Uh, what we were able to see, a lot of parents of current players were there, but we got to see essentially – what this offense could look like going up against this defense, 1v1s, uh, in terms of the first-team defense, first-team offense. Uh, going back to last Saturday and even in today to a certain extent, you mentioned Brian Kelly and company are comfortable. What's your comfortability level? What would you put that on a scale of let's go 1 to 10 as this team kind of gets ready to wrap up fall camp and really ramp up the game prep for week one against USC? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a little bit of a tricky question to answer, just because you know comfortability. What does that mean? Do we think that they're going to go out and 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 be a, a pretty well oiled machine in, in game one against USC? Does it mean that they you know they might show some cracks in the in the in the in the in the armor? Uh, I I think that's probably a little bit of both. Look, I I do think this team going into this year um, seems like a pretty well prepared group. They seem like they're yeah. playing with the energy, the effort, the competitiveness that you'd like to see. Uh, day in and day out at a fall camp, but we honestly just don't know until they get onto the field if this team is going to be ready to play or not. And I think we had a lot of these conversations last year ahead of the Florida State game, and that was clearly uh, a team that was not ready to play that game. I mean, that yeah. was just put it point blank. They just were not ready, uh, especially once the second half rolled around. Um, they seemed a little bit lethargic in that, you know, kind of coming out of that second half. And uh, I think it's just, you know, the, the, the intensity has to be there this go around. Like, I don't mm -hmm. think you need – I don't think anybody really needs to tell this fan base just like how important getting this first game is for this program to kind of start the season off with the win, um, kind of lead into kind of what the rest of the regular season will look like uh, for this team and and really give us a good first indication of what kind of the uh, the the. The, the expectations are in, in terms of yeah. the, the what 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 can be achieved, and I think going back to the spring, really the first 
you know, press conference that Brian Kelly had and, and all these players that we got to talk to, their number one goal is getting to the college football playoff. And, you know, this this fall camp was obviously a huge step in trying to, you know, figure out if this team is capable of doing that. I think you can only do you can only make those kind of evaluations to a certain point because you've got to see this team against other people and, and yeah. I think the against other guys. And so uh, in terms of confidence, I guess I'll go a heater. I guess I'll sit in the the six, seven, five range, kind of around there, right in the middle. Uh, because I do think we've seen some really good uh, you know, strides taken, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Some important strides have been made there, just in terms of the overall consistency of uh, of effort and, and intensity. Um, look, the execution part is still, I think, a little bit up in the air in terms of what you, you're going to be able to expect from, from this LSU defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think when you look at this team and the way that it can achieve its long-term season goals, it's going to have to be through improvement on that defensive side of the ball. Uh, yes, the offense looks a little bit different. They they they, they don't have Jaden Daniels. They don't have their two first round receivers. But I do think that there's an overarching belief that this offense will be okay and that they'll be able to still be a pretty solid unit. And after watching three weeks of fall camp, I I, I do believe that. I think they have the weapons. I think they have the O line. I think you know Garrett Nussmeyer has shown us some really good things the last week or two of fall camp. Uh, but really the the questions that are going to come back to this team is can they hold up defensively? Can this uh, pressure, you know, attacking style defense that Blake Baker has really spent a lot of this offseason, you know, in- installing uh, with these players, uh, can that translate onto the field against a, a pretty high powered, you know, uh, USC offense? I mean, the one thing we know about USC uh, is that, you know, Lincoln Riley is going to have that offense humming like they're going to be ready to play offensively. And then I think that they'll be creative. They'll be able to to show us, uh, you know, sh- you know, kind of you know, point out some of the, the maybe the deficiencies that we've seen for this LSU defense, but also uh, leave uh, leave open some opportunity for the playmaking side of this defense as well. So uh, very excited to get to next week, of course. You know, but but this fall camp and especially these last two days, um, I think I've been really impressed by the overall consistency of, of effort uh, that this group is having, and uh, and and really they've been a little bit nicked up. I mean, we can get into a little bit that. Uh, a little yeah. bit of that. This is as nicked up as, as they've been from an injury standpoint all fall camp. Um, you know, they they've just they they haven't they they were missing a couple of their starters and, and gave you know kind of gave way to opportunity for other players on the roster. And I thought a lot of those players stepped up in big ways on Wednesday. So, uh, but what what about you? What are kind of your what's your confidence level? I guess that this team is ready to play a, a, a game a week from Sunday. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned where we were last year, Glenn. You and I talked about this, and I remember that just wild post-game reaction we did uh, from outside in Orlando and the humidity. And and I think the biggest thing commenters said on that video was we looked a little shell-shocked. And, yeah, I think we did. I mean, we thought last year that they were going to be able to do some things. Um, Offensively, they did a lot of things. Defensively, they didn't didn't do enough, if anything, at all at times. So I think this – the storyline for me coming out of fall camp, Glenn, has kind of been is the defensive success that we have seen. And we've seen some defensive success, whether they're getting after the quarterback, whether we've seen some guys win one-on-one battles. Is it more due to this is a more balanced team? Or I think where a lot of LSU fans and, and a, a section of them are maybe concerned, is this because the offense has taken a step back naturally? Um Glenn, maybe I'm a little too optimistic or naive, but I tend to lean it's maybe a little more balanced. Um, I, I do think that this defense is going to be better, and it's kind of hard to be worse. I know that's been the running joke amongst LSU fans in social media land, but it's kind of hard to be worse. But I do think that when you have a group out there that I would say last year when we look back at it, and I think you were sitting there today when I said, um, I wish we could go back last year and watch you know, fall camp because you probably would go back and watch and 70-30 the offense was winning reps, and maybe that's – too low. I mean, maybe it was 75, 20, you know, I yeah. don't know, but you know, you kind of, you kind of go back And this year to me, I mean, we've seen days where the offense is humming and it's clicking. I know you, you've walked past me a couple times and said, Hey, you know, Nuss, he's on like he's, he's, you can feel he's in that rhythm. And then other times there's just things where they couldn't really do a lot. Uh, the defense yeah. made, made me made some stands. So to me, the storyline is, is this a balanced team? Because that's what you brought Brian Kelly in to do like the championship level coach. I know he doesn't have, the trophy yet or anything like that, but that's a guy who you feel like can win you a championship. Well, championship level teams 
this is kind of what fall camp should look back where, you know, guys are taking blows against each other. This is, you know, best on best. And so I'm not saying, I mean, I'm, I'm still hesitant to put LSU in a playoff, but I think this is getting closer to what LSU fans wanted to envision when Brian Kelly was named the head coach and Brian Kelly himself. I think this is a more balanced football team than it has been. I do think that the offense is going to take a step back from last year because last year was you know, otherworldly in terms of terms of what they could do. But I think this defense has made some strides. And it doesn't mean, Glenn, that either side of the ball is not going to have growing pains. And like you mentioned, I think the tough part, and maybe LSU fans would have loved to see this flip-flopped, is you kind of wish that nickel state game was opening week so you could see a couple of things and, and work out, hey, we're finally playing somebody else in another uniform, like that kind of thing. But, you know, you're going to get prime time against USC where there's not really a lot of room for error. And, you know, it's going to be interesting. I, I, that's been the common that's been the common theme I've come away with every day of camp is like, you know, maybe it was 75, 25, 80, 20, 70, 30, call it what you want last year. This year for me, it's been maybe closer to 60, 40 at times. And even some days, maybe the defense has had a better day. So maybe your thoughts on that. Do you feel like it's been really a balanced or I would say it's obviously been more balanced than last year, but how balanced has this really truly been to you? Yeah, I, I would say it's definitely a, a more balanced team. I, I do think that in eleven on elevens, we've seen uh, we've seen the defense make the offense earn every rep that they win. Yeah. Like that, I think that's probably the biggest thing for me is like uh, the, the 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 pass rush has been pretty consistent. I think you've seen that in one on one drills. Uh, just on Wednesday, I mean, you know, we saw you know Savion Jones, you know. Uh, go head to head with a backup like Weston Davis and and Weston Davis stood him up like Weston yeah. Davis had a good win against Savion Jones and what have we been saying all off all fall camp about Savion he's been Looks he's been giving good. Emory Jones everything he can handle at right tackle off the edge so I think that's a, a real positive sign there if you're looking for just kind of the the, the balance that we're look, that we're we're talking about with this offense and defense like today I would say the the offense certainly had a little bit of a better day than the maybe the yeah. defense did i think the, the one of the one of the absentees that we can talk about a little bit was chris hilton uh seems to be out with a bone bruise right now um, but lsu went heavy at kyle parker and aaron anderson who are two guys yeah. that maybe weren't getting consistent first team reps uh behind you know cj uh daniels and kyron uh, kyron lacy and chris hilton those two stepped up in the forefront and i thought had great days like they they both caught multiple passes kyle parker caught a beautiful touchdown from garrett nussmeyer um i believe in 11 on 11s there towards the end of the the, the practice that was open to the media um so like he's He's a guy that we haven't even really talked about this year, Kyle Parker, and and here he is at a random practice, you know, a week before the season, uh, and he's having uh, these these kinds of explosive plays that are that are thrown his way. So I do think that from an offensive perspective, um, we've seen some good strides taken here over the last week or two in particular. I will say, I thought the first week and a half or so, this was a group that was, um, you know, a little bit a little bit jumbled in terms of kind of what their identity was and mm -hmm. you know, kind of what what can we lean into that's going to be the best version of ourselves. Um, they, they were trying a lot of different things and there were some mistakes that were being made. But, um, you know, Garrett Nussmeyer, I think, has overall done a really nice job and I think his weapons have done a nice job. Uh, in the same breath, we also saw the defense make a couple of plays today. Like yeah. you know, there were there were a couple interceptions. There was a a, you know, a ball that went right through the hands of C.J. Daniels, a, a catch you have to make as a receiver over the middle of the field, went right through his hands and right into P.J. Woodland's hands. Like there's, um, and I think that to me, you know, is is showing that you know these DBs are within range. Like they are within yes. the the vicinity of the ball and the player that they're supposed to be. Uh, you know, guarding on that particular play. And I think that to me is where um, I've seen the most growth from this defense. Like you're not seeing the busted coverages. You're not seeing the plays over the top where there's not a defensive back within 10 or 15 yards of the play. Like they, they are around the ball. And, and I think yeah. when you're around the ball, it allows you to make more plays. And the way that this front seven has been attacking the offense throughout the majority of fall camp, um, it's going to give, you know, 
it's going to, they're going to create pressure in the backfield. They're going to create some of these quarterbacks to make throws that maybe they're not comfortable making. Uh, and it's going to give opportunities for that defensive backfield to have uh, more opportunities at, at interceptions and pass breakups and, and, you know, getting off the field on third down with something that Brian Kelly mentioned today in his press conference that they think that they will be a lot better at um, because that unit is working in a more cohesive uh, kind of way. Uh, yeah. So I do think that there is more balance on this team, but at the same time, we've been watching them go head to head now for three weeks. And at the end of the day, what you really need to see is this team, you know, go out there against another opponent and show that some of this stuff can translate a a into a, a really heated battle into a top 25 matchup, a game that, you know, at least from LSU's perspective, you know, feels about as must win as any other game on their schedule. I mean, I know Ole Miss and, and Alabama are going to be really important ones to have. Uh, you know, Texas A&M on the road is always going to be, you know, one of those, you know, benchmark games that you want to win as a program. But you, you've got to get this thing off to a win in, in, in this first game. And I think there's a sense of urgency from this program that we've heard uh, that maybe we haven't in the years past in terms of just the importance uh, of getting off to a fast start. Um, so, yeah, I, I do think that there's more balance on this team. And I think, you know, we're, we're, we're going to see that next week. And, um, you know, it's just going to be about does does USC have answers for their punches and uh, does LSU have counter punches to their punches like that? Yeah. It's, going to be a, it's going to be a chess match, a chess match next week. I have no doubt about that. And it's kind of exciting, too. I mean, look, uh, LSU fans are excited about Joe Sloan. But if you're Joe Sloan, you get to move your chess pieces against one of the better offensive minds in college football, regardless of what you think about him as head coach. Lincoln right. Riley is a proven offensive guy. And so uh, I think it's kind of a litmus test, not that Joe Sloan needs to prove anything to anybody, but just in terms of him being, you know, uh, now elevated to this new role. And uh, a lot of people just expecting, you know, that LSU's offense is going to be fantastic. Well, here's the chance to go out and prove it. And regardless of what the defense does, saying that, hey, we can go out and we can win some ball games with our offense. I think that's going to be something that LSU fans still want to see. Um, a little bit, and you mentioned kind of the, the nicks and the cuts and the bone bruises and everything. Wanted to touch on that real quickly because, Glenn, it kind of seems like nothing too serious at this at this juncture, which is the way you want to end fall camp. Uh, per Brian Kelly, uh, Chris Hilton has a bone bruise, is what he labeled it as in the press conference today, and should be back as early as this weekend. So that would be interesting uh, if we can get some intel from some folks about if he's out there Saturday practicing. Uh, at Tiger Stadium. Uh, West Weeks, Miles Frazier were both in a boot. Um, once again, uh, Kelly said he didn't expect it to be super serious. And then Sage Ryan was also kind of off to the side. It looked like he might have been nursing something. And then I also wanted to throw in uh, this as well. I was talking with some people. Kyle Billiot, um, not dressed out whatsoever. Shorts and a T-shirt um, hanging out. So, you know, Billiot, I think he's still going to be a fantastic freshman player, but really wasn't in that mix as we got kind of into moving day like Brian Kelly talked about. But, Glenn, a couple of those names are not just contributors. They're bona fide veteran starters uh, and yeah. what you could have in the position. I mean, obviously, we see Miles Frazier there. It does bring up the conversation. We have seen Tyree Adams just become kind of the Swiss Army knife along the offensive line. But I think uh, it's allowed LSU to build depth. But it's also, as we can see with Per Brian Kelly's report today in his press conference, not something that LSU fans should be overly worried about heading into the first week of true game, a uh, true game week next Monday. Yeah, these are good reps for for guys like Tyree Adams and and you know with Sage Ryan out, we saw a lot of J.K. Johnson with the first team today at cornerback. I thought you know J.K. you know gave up a couple deep passes, especially one to Kyle Parker. Uh, I think that was the one uh, the touchdown pass was maybe against J.K. Johnson today uh, in coverage. But you know I, I do think that you know LSU, it, it's good that they're getting a lot of these guys involved. Uh, in the in you know kind of in these rotations right now because yeah. there are going to be some times when this season where you know a guy's going to go down whether it's for a series or for a quarter or for you know uh, the rest of the game kind of deal and you're going to have to have somebody step up into those in, in those uh in those situations and I think offensive line wise you know we've seen it now a couple times because you know DJ Chester missed a, a practice or two. Um, Emory Jones was limited at times uh, in, in uh, with an illness, I think, late last week. So, uh, you know, the, the, they they moved Tyree Adams to guard. He's played a little tackle for LSU. I think, you know, him and Bo Borderline are probably the two guys you know, that I would pencil in as the first two kind of off the bench for LSU yeah. in, a, in a situation if they needed uh, to, to spell an offensive lineman for whatever reason. So, I think it's good that those guys are getting reps right now uh, against that first team defense. 
at cornerback, look, it's it's not great that Sage Ryan is missing a practice a week before game time, but I think there was always going to be a revolving door of cornerbacks rotating in and out. Um, you know, next week, regardless, like I do think J.K. Johnson was going to play. I think Jair Brown's going to play. I think P.J. Yeah. Woodland's going to play uh, next week against USC. Ashton Stamps, of course, has kind of been your most uh, consistent guy on that side of the ball at cornerback. So, you know, I, I do think it's important that you're getting some of these younger players or some of these, uh, you know, guys that maybe weren't, you know, kind of the first ones out there uh, in, in, in terms of fall camp reps, but. I do think that we got to take Brian Kelly for his word last week when he said anybody that we're putting out there in first or second team ro rotation, those are guys that we're looking hard at that are going to play next week against USC. And you know, all those players that I mentioned have been up there and and getting reps and, and, and doing a nice job. So uh, I, I do think that you know, it's while it's not great that a couple of these guys are, are missing, you know, for these practices right now. Um, Getting them back healthy next week is the most important thing. Even if they don't practice Saturday, I'm okay with it. But if they think that they're going to be ready to practice next week, um, that's that's really the most important time where you're putting your final preparations on touches for uh, for the USC game, and, and you want those guys out there for those practices. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. I think it's a good good sign that they're getting a number of guys involved, but certainly you want to go in there to game one as fresh as possible, and I think LSU believes that they, they, they will be. Yeah, I mean, the, the worst thing you can leave fall camp with, we asked Brian Kelly this, um, you know, at the beginning, is what constitutes a successful fall camp? Health. Health, health, and more health. Uh, you want to be you want to be good to go when you head into that week one game. Uh, Glenn, let's take a little turn here, and we're going to talk a little bit of recruiting to kind of end out this podcast. Um, obviously, we're now getting into the mix where high school football season has started. Georgia high school football started last Friday. Um, LSU is going to or Louisiana is going to have some jamboree games coming up, and obviously some some games starting as soon as uh, uh, John Curtis plays tonight. Uh, in fact, plays it plays a jamboree game. I was told so. Uh, by one of the media members that was headed down there. So a lot of high school football uh, starting to kick off. And uh, LSU recruiting, though, they don't really care if you're playing in season, out of season, some official visits. They're, they're ramping up this 2025 class. And two big dominoes that LSU fans would love to see fall their way, and Tiger staff would too. Let's first off start with Aiden Anding. Uh, Glenn, this is a guy that um, was kind of a Texas lean before he got the LSU offer. And obviously gets the LSU offer back in the summer, visits during the Bayou Splash, had a great visit. And I know, I know that Sonny has a crystal ball that way and, and you know, is, is still confident in that. Just kind of your thoughts on what Anding would bring to this class and, and kind of round out a corner class um, and, a, and a secondary class that I think has been pretty impressive so far. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the job that LSU's done in the secondary this summer, I mean, all those guys have been committed uh, or have committed here in the last, you know, four or five weeks. I mean, whether it's DJ Pickett, the five-star corner, Jace Thomas, the four-star safety, uh, you know, you got a, you know, a four-star cornerback now and Cade Phillips that committed last week. And really, I think the cherry on top would be Aiden Anding. I think this is a guy that just talking from a lot of to a lot of people uh, about him, um, a guy that's kind of new to football, but he's yeah. a multi-sport athlete um, and, and is really developing quickly. Like this is a guy yeah. that you get into a college football system, into a weight program around a guy like Corey Raymond, who's, you know, obviously uh, been a, a cornerback whisperer in terms of development now for well over a decade. This is a guy I think you could probably see, um, you know, elevating his game pretty quickly. And, you know, this is going to be a really important season for him because really last year, his junior year at Ruston was kind of his first big breakout season. And I think yeah. once you have that big, that big first year, you, you want to top it and you, and, and going into his senior season, I think there's a lot of expectations that he'll be one of the more, um, you know, dominant cornerbacks, playmaking cornerbacks uh, in the state. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited to see kind of what his senior season has in store for him. Uh, it does sound like that LSU and, and Texas are going to be battling this out. Um, I can't remember who, what, what's the third team that he had on there. Uh, he, I know Arkansas. Are there, are Arkansas, right. I, I don't believe this is really a big Arkansas kind of decision. I think it's really going to come down to uh, the Tigers and the Longhorns and, um, you know, that kind of leads us into our next guy. Uh, if you want to talk about him a little bit, uh, because I do think that there's another defensive back here that LSU is, uh, is going to be committing on August 24th that, you know, and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a heavy battle between, you know, to LSU and a lot of the Texas schools. 
Yeah, you mentioned it right there and let us in. And and how dare you pigeonhole him into a defensive back? He's a do-it-all kind of guy. Jonah Williams, uh, one of the more exciting players that we've seen in recent recruiting classes. Uh, everyone's high on him. Where, where regardless of what fan you are, regardless of what service you look at, uh, Jonah Williams is a bona fide star uh, at the high school level. And obviously a two-sports star. You know, Glenn, uh, Sonny did a great piece that people should go check out. It's a Nuggets piece, kind of his thoughts on it. And I kind of wanted to relay some of mine as well. You know, this feels like it's a Texas LSU race. I, I do agree with Sonny in that fact. And I think a lot of it has to do with uh, Mr. Schlossenagel himself no longer being in College Station. Uh, that's the baseball coach was at A&M now over in Austin. But the push and the pull from Jay Johnson and company, it feels like if LSU is going to win this battle for Jonah Williams, it's going to come down to a, a really a lot of, you know, bal- the balancing act of playing two sports, which I will say this, LSU not only can offer that, they can offer several successful examples that have been able to do that in Baton Rouge. Yeah, I mean, you go back to to Chad Jones, who did it um, back in that championship baseball season, I believe in 09. He was a huge uh, relief pitcher for you know, a left-handed pitcher at that, which is what Jonah Williams is. So, uh, And I believe Chad Jones also played safety. He was kind of a safety linebacker hybrid for yeah, LSU. Well, okay. So you look at that mold and you're like, well, there's your guy right there. That's yeah. the that's the kind of player you can be at LSU. Um, so I'm, yeah, I, I I'm with you. I, I do think that you know Texas is gonna have something to say about this, and I think the fact that you know Texas got his last visit um, before the dead period uh, certainly gives them a wave of momentum here. You you look at Mike Roach's piece that who also produced, who also put one out, kind of ahead of this decision. Does sound like Texas is gonna be real players here, but he also said like. This is going to take another couple twists and turns over the next couple yeah. days. Like I do think that LSU is still very firmly in the mix here for Jonah Williams, uh, and if you're able to get him on board uh, with what you have in DJ Pickett, with uh, a Bryce Underwood, a Harlan Barry, you know, kind of these top star level players that are a part of this class. Uh, I think LSU challenges for that number one spot, and I think yeah. that they. Uh, they they really bring in one of the more talented recruiting classes that they've had um, over the last you know 15 20 years however long they've been doing these recruiting uh, you know services for, for I, I firmly believe this this can go down as one of those foundational classes for this program because not only are you getting the star players you're getting star players at positions of need like you, yeah. you're getting the star cornerback you're getting the star safety you're getting you know really good defensive linemen in here that you know LSU feels good about from an edge rusher perspective and some good depth on the defensive tackle room for Bo Davis to work with um you know you you've kind of attacked everything in terms and you know you look at wide receiver you know wide receiver is another group you know with Derek Meadows and Philip Wright th- those two the uh, Teron Francis those kind of three leading the charge there at, at wide right wide out um yeah, there's this is a class that has a little bit of everything, and it's a little bit of everything with a lot of, a lot of pizzazz, a lot of uh, yeah. juice, and uh, I'm just I'm I'm really excited to see kind of what uh you know what what these decisions this week kind of have in store, uh because I think it you know again continues to add to the the factor that LSU can recruit at this level, but they can also play nil nil ball when they want to, and yeah uh, you know you saw that with the picket decision here. Over the summer, Jonah Williams, you know, that's going to be a, a factor here. You know, it's not going to be just, oh, can I go play baseball at your school mm-hmm. or what kind of role can I have on your football team at this school? Um, it's it's about relationships, but it's also about, you know, being able to compete on that NIL front. And uh, from what we've heard, from what Sonny's posted, and LSU is going to be very competitive in that space. So uh, very interested to see kind of how those two decisions shake out uh, this weekend because – this can be your pillar secondary going forward. You know, if you get Anding, if you get, you know, Pickett, if you get uh, Phillips and, you know, Jace Thomas, and now, you know, Jonah Williams, you're talking about a, a really star studded kind of uh, secondary there, a lot of playmaking ability in that group. And um, obviously that that's, that's the one group you look at right now at LSU's roster. And you're like, all right, that's where I think we can get better at f- fast. And, and LSU is yeah. really trying to attack that. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And not to get too much into it, but we'll talk about it later in the year. Could also create some interesting roster crunch uh, yeah. when, when you get to, not in terms of straight-up numbers, we know they're moving to 105 scholarships, but more, Glenn, in terms of just um, how many how many opportunities on the field are you going to get? And so that's why 2024 year is a big year. 
for guys that need to prove their worth uh, playing on the field, but also those 2025 guys, you jump on board. Maybe you might be pushing some, uh, some elder statesmen out the door if you're really that talented, but obviously. Yeah. Recruiting uh, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry. Just to build on that a little bit. Cause you did kind of see that with the offensive line this yeah. year, like, like this last off season, the offensive line had a lot of veteran backups that just weren't really getting the playing time. Weren't seeing the field. Uh, and you've brought in or you've attacked, you know, the, the offensive line from a perspective of we're going to get younger uh, for when this, you know, starting group decides to move on. We're going to get, you know, freshmen, sophomores in here. They're going to learn underneath those guys uh, and then they're going to be ready to assume that mantle. So I, I do think that that's kind of a strategy that they, that played out on the O-line that I could certainly see playing out at a, at a group like corner and, and safety because there are a number of veteran guys uh, that are going to be playing this year. Um, that are, you know, that are going to be kind of playing for uh, for their futures and for you know their futures, not only with the program, but just kind of with uh, what NFL opportunities kind of come their way. Uh, this is a big year for LSU in the secondary. It is. It is indeed. And, uh, man, we're ready to kick off another year of college football. Week zero starts this week. And then week one, full slate Thursday through Monday night. You will not have college football um, off your TVs until at least middle of January, which is really, really exciting. I know, Glenn, we work in this business, but, man, it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch a lot of football here over the next week or two and, and obviously all throughout the fall and winter. But, hey, if you want more information on what's going on, on the recruiting front, head over Sunny Ship, with a, like we said, with a great piece um, over at Go 24-7, kind of highlighting some of those nuggets and notes. We're going to keep you tabs with that. And obviously, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out the podcast feed as we continue to roll out these episodes and, and get into our regular season programming. We're going to have some previews. We're going to have some behind enemy lines look at LSU's opponents and some instant reaction shows as well. He is Glenn West. My name is Bryce Kuhn. For the final time in fall camp 2024, we say thanks so much for watching. This is the Go 24-7 podcast.